And it's, of course that's record. Start recording. It's recording at 60 frames right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's, I have these three set to different things. So like the first, that number one is 24 frames, which I don't, yeah, I would just come in here and if she's airbrushing something, you know, you can get pretty close and just kind of be smooth with it. Keep your elbows in like this. It just, you know, you can just kind of follow along with, with things and don't yeah. be afraid also to, yeah. to film her. And direct me. It's okay if you direct me. I, I hope that I've been pretty easy to uh, give direction to. Uh, do you want to click record on there? I am recording. Do you want to end it? And then yeah. Start? What's going on, Fishhead Nation? Jen Cravasi, Jekyll Bates, and we are here at Bullshed Studios. Today, we're going to make something cool. All right. Do you want to set that down there? Sure. You guys are going to be getting a little of BTS today. Behind the scenes, if you're not familiar with Ketchco, they are in the area filming. We're doing a little thing. Now, obviously, this is not going to come out until much later. But they also wanted to see some of the stuff that I'm known for on YouTube, which are my spray sessions. So they're going to ask me to do things a couple of times. We're just going to probably edit a lot of this stuff out for the spray session itself. But I was also told that down the road, once their video comes out, that I can use this as a little fun behind the scenes. So today with me, I have got Bryant and Clayton in here from Nashville, Tennessee. And they are doing a little filming. So let's have some fun with this and let's make something cool. Okay, today I've had a lot of comments on the Instagram post that I just posted a few days ago about how to do a peacock bass. Now, I can't show you anything other than what I'm going to do and what I'm going to represent here because by the time you guys see this, there might be something else out. But today, we're going to put from start to finish some primer on this. We're going to go ahead and put some white paint on it and I'm going to show you specifically, including the hand detailing, how I would represent a peacock bass that's the Florida strain from Brazil. It's going to be a three bar peacock. If we were dealing with resins, I use a self-etching primer and we're going to go through all of that in the next video. It's been a long time since I've done any prep work on resin baits for you guys and I know a lot of you guys have questions out there on how I would actually go about prepping a bait before you paint a swim bait because re resin is a whole different animal. But today we've got ABS plastic, we've got this little baby bull shad, it's a half ounce. You can pretty much throw it on any rod, even a finesse rod. And I'm just going to get that charged up in the paint cup. And we're going to give a fine first layer, just real light. My pressure is set on about 30. And with white, it's a little bit thicker than most of your other airbrush paints, especially if you're looking for a base coat. So you want to use a little bit more PSI, which is pounds per square inch, when you're shooting it out. So set your airbrush to about 30. Just give a good coat. And I'm going to clean out this paint cup and come right back. Okay, the first color that we're going to be using today is going to be a Wicked Detail Yellow. It's a golden yellow paint. This is also a little bit thicker. It's not completely opaque, but it gives us a good base. And you guys know that I go light to dark on most of my patterns because it's just a little bit easier working in the cup. So we're going to get the belly of this fish on both sides. Just a nice even stroke. We're going to go about three quarters of the way up this side of the fish. Now I've left a little bit of transparency on the belly, but you'll see why after we start putting the detailing on. So just about three quarters of the way up, and then I'm going to clean this paint chamber out just a little bit because I've got a lot of excess in here. You really don't need a whole lot of paint on these projects when you're doing smaller baits. You need a little bit more for real estate on swim baits, but on a, on a small crankbait like this, one of the introductory baits into the swim bait world, you can get away with a lot less paint. So just a couple of drops in that cup is all you need. It's 
So these are the basic colors we're working with today, aside from the white. We've got a sunset red, which is more of an orange. We've got a true red. We've got gray and green, which is going to make up the top portion of the back. And then we're going to finish it off with some black and then do a completely different color of yellow for our line outlining in detail. So we're looking primarily at eight colors total. And while I've still got a little bit of the yellow in the chamber, I'm going to put in this sunset red. It's about three drops is all you need. And we're just going to go a little bit towards the tail, a little bit towards the throat. You'll notice on peacock bass, if you're looking at the, uh, the picture, which is going to be in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, our reference photo shows a little bit of orange on the throat, and then we're going to come back and put red on the fins, because a lot of times it's going to have red. Thank you. Sorry, I was in the way. No, you're fine. You're not. As a matter of fact, let's make it easier for you. I'll just bring the trash can closer to me. So this is a cool process if you're on the behind the scenes Patreon version of this. What we're going to do is show you a little bit of how they film me filming for you guys, um, which is kind of neat. I've and really enjoyed the process, although it's been a little bit awkward having a film crew follow me around for the last week or so. It's, uh, it's definitely an eye-opening, cool process. For anybody out there that thinks that filming and editing is like a minute or two minutes out of your day, you got another thing coming. It's a lot of work these guys are putting into what they're doing. It's a whole lot of work. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring this medium gray, just a couple of drops, and we're going to cover the top portion of this bait. Make sure you got a good flow going. I'm staying around 30 on the pressure just because we want that initial layer. Now there are so many variations of how a peacock bass is going to look in the water and you can probably, it's like a fingerprint, you're probably not going to catch two that are exactly alike. Just like with the, uh, the black lateral area of a largemouth bass. They're all a little bit different. But what I'm doing here is I'm just coming and coating the top portion of this bait. And now we're starting to see a pattern take place. Once you get these base layers in, it's really easy to start figuring out what pattern that you're doing. So I'm just blowing this off into the little rag here. That probably gets edited out. I'm sure they know how to do that. All right, right back in it. We've got a little bit of green and I just got a little flake of, there we go. This is the kind of stuff that you don't want to get trapped in your airbrush cup because it'll clog you up. I always try to make sure you guys know to clean out the little tops of these. We're going to come over our gray with just a little bit of this moss green. Really cool color and it's uh, green is something that I would commonly see on a peacock bass. Now you can also say that this is a little bit of a more subdued version of a fire tiger pattern because it does hit all the all the points there. You've got green, you've got yellow, and you've got that orange. It's just not fluorescent like a natural fire tiger would be. But you're going to see that on a peacock bass. But if you're brand new to the channel, you might want to think about using stencils. I even hand cut a lot of these. This one I got off of Amazon. It was just a standard camouflage pattern. I'll leave a link in the description below because I am an Amazon affiliate. It is one of the ways that I feed my family. So if you want to use the link, you're more than welcome to do that. I do need to make that announcement in every video if I'm giving you guys links on the channel. YouTube is constantly changing, so we have to kind of adhere to what they want us to do. So now, with this, we're going to go and outline 
our three bars on this peacock cichlid. We're going to go all the way down and then we're going to use another little piece of this stencil right here to do the tail because there's usually a dot, a kill dot, on the back of these peacock bass. And the smaller ones, I'm sure, are eaten. I'm going to lower my pressure. The smaller ones are eaten by the bigger ones, I have no doubt. So I'm bringing my pressure down to about 20. It's going to allow me to give a nice consistent line. This black that I have mixed up is my own mixture. I've got transparent pearl and an opaque black. It thins it out a little bit and it allows me to shoot it through a .35 nozzle a lot easier. So I just want to make sure I've got a good flow here. And then I'm going to take one little piece and we're going to use the bars on these first three sections of this baby bull shad. So I'm going to start with the back and work backwards here. And just lay down one part of the bar. And then we're going to come back and do the other side. <laughs> so we've been discussing behind the scenes that Murphy's Law applies to every time you turn a video camera on. Today is no exception. It's a Saturday morning. We normally have these guys here on Thursday, but it rained and we've got some yard folks here, lawnscape, lawnscape, landscape people. These are not sawing concrete. <laughs> <laughs> so was it Friday? Was it last Friday? He, they were here. It was the last day of the shoot they did last Friday. And for those of you following along on my channel, I'll go, just go ahead and tell the story. We came in early. They got shots of me in the parking lot. It was really cool. We were going to do the interview. And we, I think, had just finished up my portion of the interview. And here comes this entire team of guys with bobcats and like concrete jackhammers and they proceed to spend the next four hours of the shoot breaking up right in, <laughs> right in front of the office and my studio. So hopefully you guys aren't listening to too much of that. He'll probably be out of here in just a little bit, but we're going to keep rolling with the camera. So I'm going to come back over and I'm going to do the opposite side of this. and then put this last piece of the bar in. And you can see we've got this really cool three bar going on. I'll show that to the camera, to you guys. There we go. And it's now you're really starting to see that it's looking like a peacock bass, which is something when you start out, now Mike is always famous for coming in the office in the mornings and saying, what in the hell are you working on, Jen? And uh, by the time I'm finished, he's looking at something more like these trout over here. So everything has to start somewhere. And if you start with right base layers and just do minimal stuff, you can come out with a really cool looking pattern. And this is one of them. Good morning. That's awesome. So I'm going to go backwards on this one. I'm going to start with the kill dot on the back of the fish. We're going to just drop that in with black. This is another reason I don't have the fan going this morning. It would just be too much noise for you guys. Now, I always preach on some part of my video every single time I do a spray session that I need you guys wearing your respirators. The only reason I'm not talking like one of the peanuts on the cartoons is because I have an audience to talk to. I do not sway from wearing my respirator when I'm off camera. It's just the right thing to do. I've known too many people that have had problems with their lungs. So use it, wear it, do the right thing. That's my little PSA for the morning. And then we're just getting the uh, opposite side on there. And we got one more to go. And we're starting to see that pattern take shape. And we're coming right to this pectoral fin. And we're going to do a lot of detailing on this with yellow because something that really makes a peacock bass shine and give it its actual pattern is the hand detailing. So we're going to do a little bright yellow around each one of the, the parts on here. We're just going to put a little bit of a black background on the peck fin.
like says when I do this this level of detail, I'm getting cute. Yeah, we're we're gonna set up for an interview okay. here. Uh, we're gonna film her last uh, few steps of her. her YouTube video and then we'll set all this up. But we're we're trying to get it framed right. Do you mind if we move? You can move whatever you want. Well, we'll we did uh, her friend Harrison's interview like right here, so I kind of wanted to change it up. That's fine. Whatever so works. I mean, my friend said, I'll bring it up. Okay. We're still going with this. There's obviously, you guys can hear there's a lot going on this morning. We're going to interview Mike, Mike's portion of my video. This is weird to say Mike's portion of my video because I've been watching Mike Buca on YouTube and, and in the magazines and Bassmaster for years. I mean, he's obviously and arguably the most notable accredited legend of a swim bait fisherman and builder um, in the United States. He's been, just, he's been doing it for a long time. And for those of you that don't know a whole lot about Mike Buca and Bullshad, if you guys are crankbait fishermen and you're watching me maybe for the first time because you're seeing me on Catchco, Mike has been a guide. He has been in retail. He has been all over the world teaching people how to fish with swim baits. And he had the same type of dream, similar dream that I have, which was, I don't want to work for anybody anymore. You get to that point where some people just need to do it different. I had to do something different. And Mike has a very similar story. He started building baits in his basement by himself. And then he got his, uh, his general manager now, but at the time his first assistant, Tyler Lehman, and has over the last 15 years grown this business into a very reputable, acclaimed swim bait business. These baits are made right here in the United States. The baby bull shad version were designed in the United States and designed with Ketcho and Mike Buca, and they patterned it after this four inch. But there's so much story to tell in something like this. You can't just do it in one in one spot. And then when I came along, I'm lucky enough to be able to get to do some custom work with Ketchko and with bull shad. So it is a blessed, charmed life, and I am eternally and humbly grateful for the things that I have earned my my keep in and where I'm at now and who knows what the future is going to lead to but I know it's going to be good things so we are just about at the final stages of this video I've got a bunch of stuff on the table today I want to bring this in a little bit closer so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing and then I'm going to hold off for just a little bit we're going to talk while these guys are still out there setting up because they're getting ready to interview Mike um, Hopefully Mike doesn't roast me too bad, but if he does, it's all in good fun. But we're going to add a hand-detailed line. We're going to try and get as accurate as we can, but if you can't, if you have a hand that shakes or you have uh, something that prohibits you from making a straight line, there's a little bit of tip here for you. So what you notice is sometimes I'll hold my hand with my other hand. So you can steady your hand. If you have books, you can set on your um, on your table, wherever it is that you're going to detail these baits. You can go ahead and do that. So there's a lot of different creative ways that you can utilize something to stabilize. And then I'm always going to put my finger down on the top of this bait just to give myself a starting point. So as we go into this, I want to get as tight as I can with the GoPro. Unfortunately, the GoPro does not show as, as much detail as my phone does, which I do a lot of filming for these sessions with the phone as well. But um, we're just going to start coming down the outside of this. And we're going to try and follow the stencil line as best we can because the more detail you can put into this line the better off you're going to be and the more realistic it's going to make this fish look and it doesn't have to be a super dark or opaque line um, you can kind of get a little faded with it because again you're you're trying to mimic something that happens in real life so you can fade some of those lines out a little bit not feel bad about it at all. Uh, we need to mic him up wirelessly too. 
And then I think for the second side of this, once I'm doing what I'm doing here, um, they'll show. Yeah. So I'm going to do one entire side before you guys are coming in. I'm going to do one side for the actual subscribers and the video. Add a little bit into this cup and then stabilize our hand use use your pinky and then you can you can on a on a bait that's this small as long as your helping hands have a hard enough base like this has got a really heavy lead base so it's not you can't really push it over it's pretty decent and I've got a link for that also in the description below um, some of the things that I use day to day if you guys are just getting started in the business or you want to do this as a hobby I've got some really great links for you guys and it's the stuff that I use every day I would not link something that I don't believe in and trust as a product from the paint all the way down into the accessories and the cameras that I use so if you guys want to go buck wild and start a YouTube channel I encourage that the the trick is you just have to stick with it you can't do one or two or three or even 30 videos and expect to be an overnight success that just doesn't happen um, you have to give it a lot of effort and you have to keep giving it effort even if at first you don't succeed there's a reason that saying is what it is everybody I would imagine is familiar with it and if you're not look it up if at first you don't succeed try try again and then try some more and then keep trying and then after you've tried some and failed keep trying there so oh yeah yeah thanks it's okay they know you're here in this video so and they won't see this until this will probably be a January release if what if what I heard is correct we are three two one okay so for the last side of this I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit of insight as we go along in detail we've already talked about how you want to stabilize your hand if you have a hand that shakes or you've maybe injured yourself you want to kind of brace your hand and then put your finger down here so that you have a steady area to work with keep it on a helping hand so it's got a little bit more of a weight base to it just like camera guys use sandbags um, it helps bring the center of gravity down and it keeps this stuff from tipping over these are real hard to topple unlike weeples but we're just gonna come down here I'm gonna Bob Ross the last part of this just come down here and make happy little lines go all <laughs> <laughs> you know he, he's got a birthday marathon on YouTube and I was like three o'clock in the morning and I get up really early like I'm still in the military and I happen to like stumble on the Bob Ross birthday marathon and he just always had this calming demeanor about him and he could be doing like the most random stuff and then he's like we're just gonna come down here we're gonna make these happy little lines on this happy little pe peacock bass and you just follow along with me but the thing that made Bob Ross special and the thing that makes all of this special on every one of you is that you have that creative insight and whether it's something that you're copying because I've taught you how to do it or you've taken it miles beyond where I could possibly teach you like some of the other very gifted airbrush artists out there is that you have the desire to do it different to be your own person and that's what this is all about it's more than putting happy little lines on happy little bass <laughs> Brian's having a hard time keeping a straight face at this point because he knows I'm trying to get to him but it's just um it's just that little extra special thing that you put on these things and I hope that I've been able to teach you guys something in this video I hope that you guys are having some fun with me and you're learning I love seeing all the videos and all of the pictures of the baits that you guys are painting keep doing it keep doing what you're doing whether you're digging a slough in Jonesboro Arkansas on a rice farm or you're doing something like this give it your best the only thing that holds you back is you. I'm Jen Cravassi and I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.